Now we're going to move on to logarithmic functions. There's a very first sentence tell you exactly what logarithms are, even though it may not make a whole lot of sense. Logarithms are the inverses of exponentials. So you know how addition and subtraction are opposites and division and multiplication are opposites and then a square root and a square are opposites. Well, an addition will undo subtraction. Division will undo multiplication. You get the idea, right? A logarithm will undo an exponential. So we actually use logarithms to solve exponential equations. Okay, we also use logarithms in the Richter scale. And when we're talking about uh, sound intensity with decibels, there are many, many applications of logarithms. So before we get too far into this, we need to look at how we switch back and forth between logarithmic form and exponential form. These two formulas tell you exactly how to do that. So we have log base b of y equals x. That's how you would read this, log base b of y equals x. If you were to write this in exponential form, it would be b to the x equals y. b to the x equals y. If you were to write this exponential into logarithmic form, it would be log base b of y equals x. Do you notice I'm doing that same little, some teachers call it a fish hook. So you start here and you go around this way. So log base b of y equals x. Let's see how it works with the problem. We want to write these in exponential form. Both of these are in logarithmic form. So we always start with our base, no matter if we're talking about logarithmic to exponential or exponential to logarithmic, always start with your base. So it's log base three of 81. So we have three to the fourth equals 81. Three to the fourth equals 81. We have just written it in exponential form. So for this next one, we have 6 to the negative 2 equals 1 over 36. Always start with your base. 6 to the negative 2 equals 1 over 36. So what if we want to go the other direction? What if we are given exponential and we want to write it as a logarithm? Well, remember, we're going to start with the log. So log something. I just said always start with the base. The base in the exponential and the base in the logarithm are always the same. So it's log base 4 of 8 equals 3 halves. Of 8 equals 3 halves. Another way you can remember this is the log is always equal to the exponent. Log base 4 of 8 equals 3 halves. This is your logarithmic form. How about this next one? What is the base? It's whatever is raised to the power. So this is going to be our base this time. So we start with log, log base 2 thirds of 8 over 27 is equal to 3. Log base 2 thirds of 8 over 27 equals 3. Before you can do anything with logarithms, you have to know this page. This is extremely important when working with logarithms. If you are unable to switch back and forth between logarithms and exponentials, then this entire chapter is going to be lost to you. Let's review just a little bit about what it means to have a fraction as an exponent. Remember if you have, this is your index, this tiny number outside the radical, this is your radical, this is the base inside the radical, and this is your exponent or your power inside the radical. <clears throat> if you were to rewrite this expression as something to an exponent, it would be x to the a over b. Your index is always the denominator. 
Okay, so just a few little examples for you. This one would be x to the 3 fourths. This is x to the 1 fifth. This one, you can't see what the index is. Anytime you can't see an index, it's understood to be a 2. If you don't see an exponent, it's understood to be a 1. So this is x to the 1 half, which is the same thing as a square root. So if we were to work on this next problem, we have the fifth root of 32. So the fifth root of 32 would be 32 to the 1 fifth power equals 2. So how do we write that in logarithmic form? We start with our log, log base what? Bases are the same. So log base 32 of 2 equals one-fifth. Can we take the logarithm of a negative number? The plain and simple answer is no. You don't really have to know why. We're just going to say that the argument of a logarithm cannot be negative. Okay, so we can never take the logarithm of a negative number and we also cannot take the logarithm of zero. Now, if you take higher level math classes, you may see that that little rule changes. But for the purposes of college algebra, we're just going to say the argument cannot be negative and it cannot be zero. So let's do some evaluations. How can we evaluate a logarithm without using a calculator? Well, this first one, if we were to switch this to exponential form, it means 7 to something is 49, right? 7, oops, I put the answer. 7 to something is 49. Well, what is that something? 7 squared is 49, right? So log base 7 of 49 is 2. So what about the next one? It means 3 to something equals 27. 3 to something is 27. Well, 3 times 3 is 9. 9 times 3 is 27. So 3 to the third power. 3 to the third power is 27. Okay, a little bit more review right here. What does a negative exponent mean? Do you remember? I think that was week number one and a half, something like that. If you have a negative exponent, the shortcut is we just flip it over. So three to the negative three means one over three cubed. And of course you could take that even farther and say it's one over 27. Okay, well, what about this one? One over four to the negative two, this is raised to a negative power and it's in the denominator. So that means when we flip it over, it gets in the numerator. So we have four squared, which is 16. So let's evaluate these without a calculator. Three to what is one ninth? Three to what is one ninth? Well, this is flipped over and nine is three squared, right? So that means we have to raise three to the negative two power if we want to get a one ninth. So what does that next one mean? Log base five of the square root of five. Isn't that five to the one half power? Well, that means five to what? is 5 to the 1 half. 5 to what is 5 to the 1 half? Well, if that has to be true, then the question mark has to be 1 half, right? Next, we have a common logarithm. A common logarithm is just a special one where the base is 10. Right here, log base 10 of x the thing is, when we have a common logarithm, we don't write the base usually. So if we have base 10, we usually just leave it as log. And as a matter of fact, 
the log that's on your calculator is log base 10. This is your common logarithm button. Okay, so let's look at this next example. Evaluate without a calculator. It says to find the log of 1000. Well, the base of this is 10. So if you want to write the little 10 in there, you can. That means 10 to the what equals 1000. Well, what do you raise 10 to to get 1000? You raise it to the third power. Sorry, I didn't know that got blurry. There we go. So 10 to the third is 1000. So log of 1000 is just three. That's what that means. So what about number two then? Number two says log of 10 to the eighth. Remember that's base 10. So that means 10 to the what equals 10 to the eighth. 10 to the what equals 10 to the eighth? Well, that has to be eight, right? 10 to the eighth equals 10 to the eighth. So log of 10 to the eighth is just eight. This next one says to evaluate it with a calculator. So we're going to use our calculator. This is base 10. So we can just type it straight in there. Log of 367 is about 2.56. So y is approximately 2.56. Now on your homework or on a test or something like that, it'll be more specific on how many decimal places that you need. The amount of energy released from one earthquake was 500 times greater than the amount of energy released from another. That's a lot of difference, 500 times greater. The equation 10 to the x equals 500 represents this situation, where x is the difference in magnitudes on the Richter scale. To the nearest thousandth, what was the difference in magnitudes? Well, they told us X is the difference in magnitudes. And they ask us, what's the difference in magnitudes? That means we're looking for X, right? So we have 10 to the X equals 500. Let's switch this to logarithmic form. That's log, remember, log base 10 of 500 equals X. Well, log base 10 is the same thing as log. So log of 500 is equal to x, which means x is what? It says to the nearest thousandth. So log of 500 is 2.6989. This is tenths, hundredths, thousandths, and this nine makes this eight and nine. So it'd be 2.699. The difference in magnitudes would be 2.699. Finally, we have a natural logarithm. A natural logarithm is where you have a base E. Remember we talked about E in our 6.1 and 6.2 sections. It's just that number in our calculator this number right here, if I can find it. There we go. That's the number E. Well, a natural logarithm is log base E of something. But instead of writing log base E, you just write natural log. And yes, you do write LN instead of NL. Natural log is abbreviated with an LN. Okay, you actually have an LN on your calculator. This LN represents your natural log or log base E. Let's look at this last example. Evaluate to four decimal places, the natural log of 500. So we type in natural log of 500, 
and we need four decimal places. 6.2146.